This video has been sponsored by Raycon. Also, please don't try recreating anything that you see here. Cyanide is probably one of the most well-known poisons, and in many movies and shows, I've heard them say that it smells like almonds. I've also heard chemists say it, and I've seen it written in a lot of articles and warnings. However, I've never actually smelled it myself, which is probably a good thing, but I've always wondered how true it was. It just seemed weird to me that something so toxic could smell good. This is because when toxic things have a smell, they're usually bad, which lets you know to get away from it. If cyanide smells like nice almonds though, I feel like I'd be more likely to go towards it. This just didn't really seem right to me, so I decided that I had to see for myself. To make this happen, what I had to do was pretty simple, and I just had to smell some cyanide. However, I didn't just have a bunch of cyanide sitting around, and I had to order some. I was originally planning to just get a few grams of it, but for small quantities, it was really overpriced. I'm really not sure how I rationalized it, but I somehow convinced myself that it was much smarter to get a full kilo instead. However, I have no idea how I'm even going to use a fraction of this, and if you guys have any interesting suggestions, I'd love to hear them. Okay, so I now had a bunch of cyanide, and it was all in the form of sodium cyanide. This is one of the most common forms of it, and what I've always found interesting is how boring it looks. When I first saw sodium cyanide a few years ago, I really thought its appearance would match its scary reputation, but it was about as fear-inducing as table salt. It also wasn't as poisonous as I thought. I always assumed that it was insanely dangerous, and that just a speck of it could kill you. However, for the average adult, you need a few hundred milligrams, which is actually quite a bit. I mean, it's also not a lot, but there's no way that you would just accidentally eat this much. Either way, I now had the cyanide, and ideally, I would have just smelled it to get my answer, but it unfortunately wasn't that easy. This is because sodium cyanide is a solid, and like a lot of other solids, it doesn't smell like anything. It's just not letting off enough vapor to detect it, and it's the same reason why you can't smell table salt. When people talk about smelling cyanide, they're usually referring specifically to hydrogen cyanide, which is a gas. This can be detected in extremely low concentrations, and it's one of the most dangerous forms. This is because you really don't need that much of it in the air for a few good breaths of it to be fatal. But anyway, with that being said, the next thing that I had to do was make some hydrogen cyanide. To do this, I started by measuring out just 3 milligrams of the sodium cyanide, which was basically a single crystal. I then added about 25 mils of water, and I stirred it until it completely dissolved. What I had now was a solution of sodium cyanide, but it was insanely dilute. It would probably take a hundred times more cyanide to kill me, and even if I took this whole thing as a shot, I'd still be fine. I then put the beaker into a small chamber, along with a cyanide meter that I had rented. Initially, it didn't look like much was happening, but after a few minutes, the meter started detecting cyanide. This was happening because when sodium cyanide is exposed to water or moisture, it slowly hydrolyzes and turns into hydrogen cyanide. As a gas, this then escaped the beaker, and it started filling the chamber. The goal now was to get it concentrated enough that I could for sure smell it, but not enough that it would be dangerous. To find out what this would be, I did a little research online, and I was able to find this table. It was honestly a bit scary to see the words immediate death, but it was also only at very high concentrations. When it got down to between 20 and 40 parts per million, or PPM for short, it said that it only caused slight symptoms after a few hours. For me to smell it though, it would probably take at most a few seconds, so I figured this would be totally fine. I also found this on the CDC website that said up to around 50 ppm can be tolerated for 30 to 60 minutes. 
Based on this and a lot of other info that I was able to find, it seemed totally fine to go with something like 40 ppm, but I wanted to be as safe as possible. So I decided to start at around 15 ppm and I figured if I couldn't smell it, I could always just increase it. After a few minutes, it was only around 3.5 ppm and it was going to take a while to get to 15. So I decided to give it a little boost by shooting in some extremely dilute sulfuric acid. This would immediately react with the sodium cyanide and convert it to the hydrogen cyanide. I then closed the chamber and very quickly, the concentration started increasing. In this case, adding this acid was okay because I was working with barely any cyanide. However, it can be extremely dangerous. If it were added to a concentrated solution or pure cyanide, it would start pouring off a crazy amount of hydrogen cyanide. This can be very hard to control, and depending on the scale, it can quickly fill a room with a fatal concentration. In general, you usually do everything you can to avoid mixing the two, and there are very few circumstances that you ever need to. When it got just slightly above 14 ppm, I was ready to test it. Okay, so I have my scary little box here, and I guess I just have to smell it. It's honestly not very, it's not as strong as I thought it would be, but it's also, it's not at all like an almond. I would not associate this at all with food. It really has a chemical smell. It kind of smells like weak bleach or chlorine. And maybe a little bit like an indoor pool that has too much chlorine in the air. Either way, it's not almonds. I don't smell anything that resembles almonds here. Maybe I just don't remember what almonds smell like. Maybe, I, maybe I've just never smelled an almond before. I think that's possible. So I think I have to go and see what an almond actually smells like. Okay, so what I had to do next was smell some almonds, and I picked up a pack of some gourmet ones from the dollar store. Now, all I had to do was cut it open and test it out. It kind of just smells like nothing. Yeah, nothing. It smells like nothing. I was honestly a bit surprised by this, but I figured that it was just because they all still had their skin on them. So I started thinking that maybe if they were crushed up, it might make a difference. When they all looked more or less destroyed, I tested them again. Okay. Uh, okay. It still kind of smells like nothing. As a last attempt to get anything from it, I added some water. I was hoping that by turning it into kind of crappy almond milk, that it might help release something. Just smells like almond milk. <laughs> it just smells like almond milk. Tastes like really bad almond milk. Actually, it's not that bad. After all of this, I think the main thing that I learned was that almonds don't actually smell like much of anything. From what I could smell, though, it wasn't anything like the cyanide. However, I have to be honest and say that I kind of expected that. This is because when people say that cyanide smells like almonds, they aren't talking about the regular sweet almonds that you find at the store. They're instead referring to bitter almonds, which are very different. Unlike the sweet ones, bitter almonds contain a decent amount of cyanide, and they're a lot harder to get a hold of. 
I tried buying them years ago, but I gave up because I couldn't find them anywhere. However, recently I did a random search and I found them on Amazon, which kind of surprised me. I mean, they do have some limited and legitimate use in cooking and stuff, but it seemed like they were there mostly because of alternative medicine. Some of the reviews were genuinely scary, and at least a few of them talked about using it as a treatment for cancer. One of them even claimed that they were using it on their sick dog, which is kind of not okay. After reading all this, I was a bit morally conflicted because I really didn't want to support this type of market. However, it was also my only source of them, so... They arrived a few weeks later, and I figured I'd test them in the same way as before. Okay. And it smells like nothing. Okay. So just like last time, they were practically odorless, and the next thing that I had to do was smash them. But before doing that, I really wanted to taste one. They did have cyanide in them, and eating them wasn't ideal, but just one wouldn't have enough to hurt me. I'd probably have to eat a good handful of them before I really started to have problems. I think I fucking died. This doesn't taste like anything. <laughs> I literally taste air. It's not even bitter. I think I have a dud. <laughs> I'll take another one. Okay, hopefully I'm not dying of cyanide. Look at there. Oh God. It tastes like a hint of cherry, but it's like really bad. It's like super bitter. <laughs> It tastes like a bit of cherry. Ah. Oh. No, this is no good. It's awful. It also just occurred to me now, these are raw almonds and I don't know if they've ever been washed. Oh, it's awful. No. Okay, so I think I overreacted a bit, but it really didn't taste good at all. It was way more bitter than I expected, and it kind of made my tongue feel numb. Before this, I was kind of scared about the idea of accidentally mixing up the bitter ones with the regular ones. However, at least from my little experience here, there's just no way that you could eat this by mistake and somehow not notice. But either way, I then moved on to smashing them. Okay, so, uh, it smells, it actually smells like something this time, but it's really faint and kind of just smells like generic plant with a bit of earth. So this time it might have actually kind of smelled like almonds, and it was probably because of all the benzaldehyde. Unlike sweet almonds, bitter almonds have quite a bit of benzaldehyde and it gives off a characteristic almond or cherry smell. Because of this, it's often used as an artificial flavor for both of those things, but in my opinion, it reminds me a lot more of cherry. But anyway, based on what I smelled here, I started thinking that it was also wrong about the bitter almond because it still wasn't anything like the pure cyanide. However, I hadn't tried adding water to it yet. Unlike before though, I didn't just pour the water directly into the bag, and I instead dumped all the almonds into a beaker. I then put this into the chamber, along with the meter. After that, I added a bunch of water, and then I waited. For the first few minutes, it didn't do much, but then it jumped to half a ppm, and started slowly climbing. The reason this was happening was because the almond didn't just have free cyanide floating around, and it was all trapped in something called amygdalin. In this form, it's kind of like the sodium cyanide, and it's not something that you can smell. In the water though, enzymes from the almond are able to attack the amygdalin 
and split it apart into benzaldehyde, sugar, and hydrogen cyanide. To get it going a bit faster, I tried just stirring it around, and it did work. However, it was maybe working too well, and it was making way too much hydrogen cyanide, and it quickly maxed out the meter. To be fair, I was kind of expecting this to happen, because between all these almonds, there was quite a bit of cyanide. From what I found, each one can contain between 4 and 9 milligrams, with an average of around 6, and I had at least a dozen here. I thought that maybe I could get rid of some of it by venting it, but right when I put the lid back on, it would quickly max out again. To make a safe setup like before that I could actually smell, I decided to try it with just one almond. So I quickly smashed one and dropped it in a fresh beaker. I then put this in the chamber, added some water, and mixed it around. Over the next several minutes, the concentration slowly rose, and when it got to around 14 ppm, I was ready to test it out. Okay, so uh, I guess it's time to smell some cyanide again. Uh, it's, I, I mean, it's, it's just, it just smells like cyanide, but it might be a bit different. Uh, I think I can detect a, some of the benzaldehyde, which has a slight cherry hint to it. But besides that, it still doesn't at all smell like almonds. So I guess my conclusion from all this is that it is technically accurate to say that cyanide smells like bitter almonds, but it's also kind of misleading. It's confusing because you tell people that it smells like bitter almonds, but nobody has smelled bitter almonds, and then people have never heard of them, so they just assume they're like regular almonds, and then they're prepared to smell something like sweet and nice like almond cookies, and that's not at all what you get. Also, a lot of people apparently aren't even able to smell cyanide at all. It was hard to find sources for it, but some said that up to 50% just can't detect it at all, even at toxic levels. So it's pretty misleading, and I think maybe even dangerous and bad, because you're preparing people to smell something that they're never going to smell. I think that's worse than just not even knowing at all <laughs> what it smells like, or even having an idea. Now besides just myself, I wanted to get at least a couple other people to try it out, and I was able to convince my brother and our friend Reggie, who works with us, to also try it. It smells like a to like a pool towel that you forgot to wash. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it smells like chemicals, and I used to have a swimming pool, and we would dump buckets of chlorine into it to clean it, and it smells like that, except stronger. And uh, Wait, stronger, stronger. Yeah, it's like a stronger smell of chlorine right now from what I'm getting. And it pierces my brain. Their opinions ended up being pretty similar to mine, but it was still only a sample size of three. I really did want to go out and find other people to give their opinion, but none of my friends were really very excited to help out. <laughs> Sounds so sad at the end. <laughs> okay, so I think that's about all I have to say about cyanide. I really did enjoy putting this whole project together though, and I would like to do something like this again. I already have a few things that I want to try, but if you guys have any suggestions, I'd love to hear them. I also want to give a big thanks to all my patrons for supporting me, and to Raycon for sponsoring this video. Earlier this year, Raycon sent me a pair of their everyday E25 earbuds to try out, and since then, I've been using them pretty regularly. When I first got them, I was a bit worried that they would fall out of my ears, but they fit really well, and I've had no issues. 
I was also able to easily pair them with my phone without reading any instructions, which I really liked. On top of this, they have good bass and a noise isolating fit, and with six hours of playtime, they can easily last for most of the day. In terms of price, they're surprisingly affordable, and despite sounding just as good, they start at half the price of other premium wireless earbuds. I personally really like them, and I definitely recommend checking out Raycon. They also have a 45-day free return policy in case, for whatever reason, you don't end up liking them. With all that being said though, if you decide to pick some up, you should be sure to use my special link in the description, buyraycon.com slash Red, which will give you 15% off your order. But anyway, I hope you guys liked the video, and I will, uh... As usual, a big thanks goes out to all my supporters on Patreon. Everyone who supports me can see all my new videos at least 24 hours before I post them to YouTube. You'll also get access to all the older videos that I had to take down, and if you support me with $5 or more, you'll get your name at the end like you see here.